Part 3, days 3 and 4, broken, but the adventure continues. Part 1, when it's broke, do try to fix it. Sunday, a day of rest, time to spend with the family and loved ones, but also a day when all the shops are closed and nothing is happening. I sat waiting at Dorset Farm, uh, Farmer John and his lovely wife were fantastic and very understanding with my situation. They had given me a space and, and a bed for another night and told me not to worry. The uh, insurance company helped me to organise a mechanic for that afternoon, but I didn't feel right just sitting there without not having to go try to remedy my own situation. Sufficient. I should try at least to do what I could. How do I even open um, the handle for the throttle? What, is, what should it look like? Um, what does it look like when it's broken? Well, I had to Google and several things came out. Um, I did ask the community for any tips as well. So as I got my toolkit out and tried to make some sense of it, I actually got a video from Extra Rider. What he'd actually done is get up on a Sunday morning, gone down straight to his NC750, opened it up, showing me the whole process step by step. Um, showed me what to look for, what it should look like, um, and what potentially I could do. This is the two nuts here. I'm trying to slacken off to move the brake assembly and the brake reservoir out of the way. Yeah. Um, and then on the back of my switch, obviously this switch is going to be more complicated than here. Xterizer just sent me a video telling me exactly what to do, what to have a look at, how to break this down. Thank you so much. It's really, really appreciated. It's going to make a massive difference. And before I wasn't too sure, at least now I've got a little bit of confidence saying, look, this is how things are being put together. So like it's all new experience to me. You probably should have played a lot more videos and watched all these kind of mechanic things first. And I, I don't know what to say. I'm just so lucky all these people have really, really come through for me and I'm making a massive effort. Thank you so much to everyone. Really, thank you so much. And, yeah. Let's see if we can get this sorted. I was absolutely gobsmacked. And when, when I went through it step by step as shown, um, I saw that the, co the cable had actually snapped at the nipple. So this was, this was way beyond me. I didn't know how to glue it in. Um, I thought it would perhaps make it easier for the mechanic when he showed up to fix it. Well, that's what I hoped. As the mechanic arrived, um, he had a look and said, well, that's not a standard size. I can't fix it. Um, as everything's shut. I might be able to see if I can find something tomorrow when the shops are open, but there's no guarantees, mate. I had a choice to make. There was no space at the B&B for another night, and I couldn't afford another night anyway. Um, and if it couldn't be done, I was in trouble. I had to be at work as well. So in the end, I made a choice. If it couldn't be fixed, definitely by the, by the next day, 
I would just have to get it recovered back to Derbyshire. I also would need to get a train ticket. So as recovery showed up later that day, they took donkey. <sighs> it was gut wrenching uh, to know that I'd failed on my attempted trip. I'd have to come back at some point to do it again. As Donkey left, I felt a part of me had gone. We'd started this uh, trip together and now on the way back, we had been separated. I spent the rest of the, of the day organising my trip back, uh, talking to the insurance company, uh, reassuring my family that all was okay and having the piss taken out of me by my mate. Yeah, thanks dude. Without transport, I was stuck and I had nowhere to go. So I just rested at Dorset Farm. I had a train the next day at 10.53 uh, in the morning. Okay, so um, I arranged with the insurance um, that they would send a taxi for me at 8.30. Partly as I expected them to be late, but also that I wanted a little, little bit more of Liscard. And of course, stock up on meal deals to avoid paying the exuberant train sandwich cart prices. Part 2. Day four, I had to catch a mocking train. The next day I woke up at seven, had my breakfast and uh, at eight o'clock confirmed with insurance taxi would be there before 8.30. Um, as I waited, 8.30 came around, no taxi. I called and they said another had been dispatched and would be there for 9.30 at the latest. Definitely. I explained the train station was almost an hour away and I had a lot non-changeable ticket. I was given assurances that they would definitely be there with any doubt. 9.30 came around and as I stood outside in the rain hoping to flag it down if I'd missed it, nothing. I was now starting to panic. I called them again and I was told it was already on the way and it should be there any second. At 10pm I couldn't believe it. After two hours I was still waiting for a taxi. I kicked myself. I'd been a fool to rely on the insurance company. I should have just booked a private taxi. I just had two hours of stress without any reason. And at this point, I was in trouble again. All of my own making this time. I was going to lose my £120 ticket and I had no place to stay and reorganise reorganize myself. And I was almost broke. This was doing nothing for my blood pressure. And now I was imagining the ragging I'll get in the pub for this. On the bright side, I really went to the pub and after having to fork out for this, I don't think I'd be going any time soon. With 55 minutes before my train and no hope in sight, Farmer John actually came to the rescue. I could not believe it. Um, it's not what I would normally expect or hope from the places we stay. He said, look, we might make it if you, we leave now. Whilst I was still taking everything in, he was traversing out this stunning Land Rover and called me over. It was an Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator movement. Come with me if you want to catch your train. But in a Cornish accent, which uh, still sounded very heroic to me. The next 45 minutes were some of the best driving I've ever seen in my life. Not only was Farmer John a pretty cool and nice guy, but he had taught the Stig everything he knows. It was fascinating to learn more about Farmer John. Um, and he had had a, an amazing life. He'd had some brilliant stories. And it's always a privilege to meet those people who are passionate about their work and have done so much in their time. And he'd even spent time in Derbyshire too. So and so he'd liked it. it. My heart swelled with pride for my home county, of course. Derbyshire rocks with bells on, but uh, Corn Cornwall had been pretty stunning too. I have to say it. It was a stunning ride through the Cornish countryside. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. If Cornwall is not short in anything, it's hedges. The problem is there are some stunning landscapes behind them. But as we approached the station, I was on time and the train had just not arrived. I wanted to offer something as a thank you, um, but uh, he, he refused with a smile wishing me best on my continuing journey. As I sat on the platform, watching my train trundle down the tracks, I could hear my heart still thumping. I had made it. Wait, don't jinx it, you fool of a tuck. We almost have a seven-hour train journey back to Derby and then a further trip back home. This was going to be a long day. I always enjoy long journeys on the bus, but especially by train. It always fascinates me to see the country and the landscape changing. 
the industry, the people, the passengers getting on and off and changing at different stops. But my highlight of the trip, without a doubt, was the extra rider coming out to the train station to see me um, as we'd made a brief stop in Exeter. Somewhere. Is he here somewhere? D. E. Where's A D? There he is. Hey, mate! Such a shame to see each other this way, isn't it? <laughs> you had a good trip. Yeah. Is it gonna get you? There you go. Got you. Well done. Well done. And off he goes. That's a quick telephone call there. What a legend of a bloke. Anyway. Catch you later, Quinn. Have a good trip. It, what a massive effort for a two minute stop. It was beyond words and I was gobsmacked. With uh, both the YouTubers I'd met that weekend, the experience was surreal. And I had not been disappointed. Meeting saddlebags and seeing extra rider at the train station saved me from the feeling that this trip was not a disappointment or failure. I've been watching their channels for quite a while and since we've become quite good friends. I can say that they are really nice, genuine and generous human beings. Now on this train ride home, it stops in Exeter and I received a photo from Quinn Peaks Biker sat in the carriage at Exeter station with his back to the window and over his shoulder was Exeter Rider and I thought that was fantastic Ooh, buzzard. so I think that made his day so there you go that's the plight of Quinn Peaks Biker who I actually now call Calamity Quinn after arriving home, it really hit me that this trip wasn't something I had done. My friends had helped me through the tough spots by really putting themselves out of the way and all the people I'd met and all the experience I've had had made it worthwhile. My only disappointment was I'd booked accommodation in Scotland that I couldn't cancel. I do hate seeing a room and a breakfast go to waste. Well, it's... Got the bike back yesterday, so I've really been thinking. I've really been disappointed that I've not been able to get this trip done. But then I thought, you know what? If I, the bike may be down, but I'm not. So guess what? Road trip. We're going to Scotland. Yes. So I'm going to show you the video of that. But before I do, he has to now gone back to Derby, but he isn't. He hasn't given up. He sort of texts me. Uh, saying you know do you think if i do the rest of the trip in the car from derby to scotland do you think it will count damn right it does quinn that's my thoughts on it i thought yeah damn right go for it because at the end of the day he's still done it he come up against a brick wall the cable snapped he couldn't ride his bike anymore so yeah you're damn right i think if you can uh, you know you could just throw your hands in the air and say right that's the end of it but no if you can still get up there even if it's in your car why not so go for it, Quinn. Lands into Cot, John O'Groats, 2021, with Quinn on his SYM, stroke car, stroke train, <laughs> whatever next, a plane. Um, yeah, so he's he's going to be doing that now. So with encouragement and a push from ER, I took the kids to Scotland, and we had a lovely little holiday together in the car.
for a time up north and life doesn't work out how you want but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing it was as journey should be you learn about others and yourself you meet new people and even make some friends I would had a few upsets I would got through being both pulled and pushed you can have a, a tour and an adventure in any medium well even a donkey but I wouldn't have changed a single detail even if I could <laughs>